Some are concerned their phones won't work if the grid goes down via war or even the solar eclipse this Monday. How will you stay connected to your loved ones? All this and more today on The End Time Show. Welcome to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. We're so delighted you've joined us today. We have open lines at 877 end time 877-363-8463. We'll be getting to your calls later on in the show, so let us know what you think about what we're talking about today. Uh, Doug, we're starting with Israeli airstrikes. Before we get into that, I do want to remind you that this show is brought to you by First Cup Coffee. It's a Christian-owned Patriot Coffee Company out of the great state of Texas. They've got 11 different roasts, each one named after a specific piece of American history. You can get one of those roasts by going to firstcup.com. Use code ENDTIME to get 10% off. If you subscribe, they'll actually give you another 10% off. So go to firstcup.com today and use code ENDTIME to get 10% off. Doug, I'm sure you saw the stories of the Israeli airstrike attack. What are you thinking when you see that come across uh, your, probably your cell phone? Well, when I when I saw it yesterday, Vince, I was uh, I was shocked that an embassy actually had been hit. They they said it was adjacent to the embassy, but it's right there. We know Israel can you know launch precision missiles that can hit just very precise targets, and so uh, this was actually a building that was right next to that embassy there. And of course, you know Iran uh, has responded very angrily in saying that they were would. Uh, you know, do some very vicious revenge on this attack. But I, the first thing I thought was, well, okay, so they're taking it to the head of the snake now. They've talked about that, that they need to chop the head of the snake off. Um, you know, they've got Hamas on the run in Gaza. They've been attacked in, you know, um, Jordan over the past few days with drone strikes and things. And so um, Israel had decided from everything that I've read in the articles, Israel decided we've got to take it to Iran. We've got to let them know that we mean business, that we're not going to take this anymore. And this general that they took out uh, is uh, one of their highest ranking generals, and he is responsible for a lot of the terrorist attacks that have happened in Israel. Have we heard from Russia yet? Have we heard from any of the world leaders? I, as far as today, I haven't heard anything other than America is still waiting before they give a comment. They want to know exactly what's going on and what happened. They're hoping that this does not result in the war broadening and uh, bringing Iran full into this. So uh, we know that Iran, you know, is the last time we checked, they were only days away from enriching uranium that they would be able to have nuclear bombs. And so uh, Israel has talked about needing to stop them. And so could this be part of that? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Now, Doug, we do know that a war is coming, according to Bible prophecy, that will kill a third of mankind. Yeah. Of course, the Bible says it's going to originate from the Euphrates River. And that's part of where Iran is where part of where the Euphrates River is housed. Yeah. Um, do we see? You say hopefully not. I know. I know you know that at some point that's going to expand. This war is going to become much, much larger, mm -hmm. much more catastrophic. Yeah. So, do you see that potentially happening right now? Yeah, I could see it happening, especially you know the arrival of Russian warships into uh, the Red Sea alongside Chinese warships. Um, the early part of last week. So we've got that going on. Of course, they're saying they're there to make those shipping lanes safe from the Houthis that are attacking those shipping lanes. And uh, so they say that's why they're there. But remember, Russia is our allies with both Syria and Iran. And with this happening and the Russian warships in the Red Sea, I mean, it, it's looking, and, and we've heard other people say, you know, could this be the start of something? So. Very interesting, and we'll just have to keep our eye on those developments. Is war coming to America? Well, yeah, I believe eventually it will. I mean, I don't see how we can escape it. In that sixth trumpet war, it's going to be a worldwide war. Will we, will we be involved in that? Yeah, I believe we will be involved in that. Uh, you know, you said Scripture tells us one-third of mankind will die in result of that. And I would think that the United States and our power that we have with our arsenal that yes, we would have to be involved in that. Well, I know we talk, uh, in spite of stories like this, we're talking about hope and peace and things right. like that, which while we're talking about these specific details, <laughs> uh, that may be a bit humorous, but we do get to the hope and peace and we'll get to that in a bit. But yeah. I, I start thinking about what happened uh, back in February 
with the phone lines going down. I remember waking up, my phone wasn't working like it normally does, right. and I'm going, you know, I, I just moved. This Wi-Fi is bad at my house. Right. There's something wrong, and then I'm going, wait, no, my cellular uh, portion of my phone is not working. And so I drive to work. Of course, nothing on my phone works, so I'm playing the radio. Yeah. You know, you the, remember the those, old right? Days. Those old-fashioned yeah. radios. Um, <laughs> and that's all that worked. Right. And so I'm like, that could happen again soon, right? Yeah, it, it very well could. And we still don't know who's responsible for that. You know, some people say that was a terrorist attack, that we were hacked. We don't know. Could Iran and their proxies be involved in that? They very well could be. And could we see something else like that on the horizon? Yes, we could. Well. We're going to talk about it today, and we need your help. Share this video, comment, give us a heart instead of the blue thumbs up. It goes a long way in breaking through the algorithm and getting to your friends and family. So share this video right now. Um, you know, we're especially excited because today we're joined by Chris Orr from the Satellite Phone Store to help us better understand what happened when AT&T had national outages a little over a month ago and how possible it is for something like that to happen again. Uh, Chris came to the U.S. in 1996, born in Ripley, England. Not only has he had a successful technology career competing with companies like AT&T, but he also founded Satellite Phone Store. So we're thrilled to have Chris and Satellite Phone Store with us today. You can check them out at sat123.com, sat123.com. Chris, welcome to the End Time Show. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here today. How did it feel back in uh, February when everyone else's phone didn't work, but probably yours was up and running just fine? Well, you know, nobody likes to see... Uh, the systems here fail, but you know it, it really goes to prove what we've been talking about for a long time. The communications are, you know, we take them for granted, uh, but we really can't afford to take our cell phone communications for granted. You know, cell phones rely, cell phones and cell phone calls rely on cell phone towers uh, in order to connect, and they also rely on the power grid being up and constant. And what we saw in February and what we've been seeing the last couple of years is that cell phone networks are vulnerable to either cyber attacks or natural weather disasters. And the power grid, you know, is the, it's the same story. So if the power grid goes down, not only do we not have power, but we don't have the ability to make a phone call. And that's where satellite phones come in because satellite phones do not rely on cell towers or the, or the uh, power grid. So sat phones talk directly to the satellites in the sky. So when you play, as long as you can see the sky, you can place a call to anyone from anywhere on Earth or receive a call from anyone, no matter where you are on Earth. So on back in February on that day, our sat phones had 100% uptime as they do every single day since the networks went up. So they did actually provide a lifeline for anyone who had one. And, and you know, this attack, on, uh, which I think this was an attack, AC, AT&T says it was a software upgrade. But to me, if I upgrade the software on my computer, why would your computer be affected? <laughs> and my point is, is that AT&T wasn't the only network affected. Right. We had Verizon and T-Mobile and others. So I think this might have been kind of a dry run, you know, to see what would happen in this country if somebody attacked us. What do you guys think? Well, that's exactly what we think. Um, you know, when that happened the day of, I have a Verizon phone. Vince has AT&T, and I was having the SOS show up on my phone as well. And so we were affected, you know, with two different types of phones. Plus, there were other businesses like insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies that were hit that day as well. And so we could see that that was more of an attack, and it seemed like they were trying to give us stories to, to keep everybody from really understanding what was going on. But we do believe that was a dry run and that it could happen again, uh, and it could happen very soon. And especially with, you know, Monday being the total eclipse there's a lot of people that are saying that's one of the things that will happen is it could affect your cell phone uh, usage in a lot of these uh, states where the saddle the uh, eclipse is happening they're calling for emergency uh, alerts for their uh, all their emergency responders saying you know there may be a, a system down to where we can't respond to the calls the way we need to we need all hands on deck we've been seeing that here in Texas, we've seen it in other states as well, where they're saying first responders may have trouble because of phone lines being down. So they are predicting that that could happen. Yeah, no, and, and I totally agree. And I think, look, you bring up Texas, it was a couple of years back, right, where you had a total outage of power, you know, that went on for days or weeks. 
and and that would of course meant that the uh, cell phone towers were down as well so you know whether you know whatever's causing these attacks and to me i think a lot of this is cyber attacks coming from chinese groups like apt 31 you know these hacking organizations from china russia iran that are really targeting and they're not trying to hide it they are trying to take out the us infrastructure right here at home uh, to disable us and you know what comes after that i can only imagine but i think we can all you know predict what they're trying to do in the big picture so the the key to stopping that and to being a patriot in my mind is to make sure on an individual basis we're prepared mm-hmm. so if we have satellite phones ourselves then they will will not be able to stop us communicating if we also provide solar power generators so the grid goes down you'll be able to power your houses and and all of your electronics but the government can't do everything even on the best of days you know so being a patriot means being prepared in my mind and that means having independent not just food sources and extra ammunition and so on but having independent communications and having independent power supplies and at sat123.com we have all of the above well let me ask you a question because i know that there's going to be a lot of people that ask this because they've seen the movie leave the world behind and uh it was a netflix movie that apparently barack obama was part of producing it and all kinds of different things uh, but in that program, the satellite phones were also down. Is that realistic or not at all? I mean, look, it, no, it is realistic. Uh, and the question is, it's like, okay, you know, how vulnerable are they? I mean, the Iridium network has nearly 100 satellites up there, and you would have to take out most of them to completely take down, you know, satellite communications. But it, it certainly is possible. And if those satellites go down, that means the U.S. military is going to be driving blind and running blind and we you know we really do have much bigger problems right uh, this is you know so it's not out of the question i'm just gonna be honest you know uh but in the in the regular course of operations cyber attacks are hitting ground-based infrastructure like the cell phone networks like the landline networks that still exist and satellite phones really do offer a lifeline you know in that case but no the scenario in that movie you know is, is certainly possible it is the worst case scenario, but it's certainly possible. Chris, you mentioned there that our military would be flying blind as well. Um, can you talk about that for a little bit on, you know, they're not using cell phones like, and I remember the story where uh, all of Congress, I believe it was, they all got their satellite phones last year. And, you know, we right. talked about that story on our show, like what are they preparing for? What do they know about? Uh, can you talk a little bit about the government and their usage of satellite phones? Well, look, I mean, back when the, the uh, Iridium network was the first one, satellite network, satellite phone network to go up. Uh, and back then it was uh, Motorola who put that up and paid for it. And the U.S. military started using it then. Uh, when the company Iridium went into trouble and bankruptcy and was sold, uh, the U.S. government basically was the first customer uh, standing there to make sure the whole network you know, didn't just slide away into nothing. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of secrecy around how they use their communications. I, I'm certainly not privy to any of those secrets, but I can tell you that uh, they are the biggest user, uh, to my knowledge, of SATCOM uh, in the U.S. and around the world. So they are using these phones and these networks in war theaters such as uh, they were heavily used in Iraq and Iraq, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And anyone who is brave enough to serve will tell you that when they went to make a call home, uh, the Iridium network was what they were you know, calling home on. So it wasn't just keeping the war operations going, it was keeping the troops in contact. Uh, FEMA is the same thing. When FEMA rolls into an area that's just been hit by uh, a, a disaster like a hurricane or what have you, they know going in that the cell phone networks are not going to be working. They're all going to be down and unavailable. So they roll in with these uh, with this satellite communications equipment. And so there really is a heavy reliance on it. And I would imagine that the Defense Department, you know, is doing whatever they can to protect those satellites, uh, given how much they rely on them. So, look, I mean, for me, it's like if I'm flying on a plane, I want to be sitting where the black box is, (laughs) because if that's the only part they expect to get back, I want to be stapled to it. And when it comes to communications, um, I want to know what FEMA is using and the U.S. military is using. And this is the same exact equipment that the U.S. military has. Chris, I know you've been doing interviews all day. We want to be respectful of your time. If I may ask one more question. Of course. Um, 
on our chat, people are saying, but satellite phones are $2,000 plus dollars. Is that true with sat123.com? It is true pretty much everywhere else, but at sat123.com, if you sign up for a subscription plan, which is around 80 to 90 bucks a month, you get the satellite phone for free. So we're trying to make this affordable to everyone. We don't think that just the millionaires and billionaires should have you know, emergency communications. We think that everyone should. And that's why we give you the phone for free when you subscribe. And with your subscription, you're going to get 100 minutes a month, which even roll over if you don't use them. So look, I know it is not the cheapest thing in the world and money's tight for a lot of people, but this is life insurance that can save your life, not just send you a check when you're done. You know, I can't tell you how many how many people have let us know how these sat phones have saved their lives in the 20 years that we've been in business. And they're very grateful for that. And we want to make sure that opportunity is there for anyone, no matter what their income level. Well, like you said, if you can see the sky, your sat phone's going to work. Correct. Well, I know Vince said that was the last question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to ask one real quick, if you don't mind, Chris. Sure. Uh, so we here as a broadcasting network that we're we're you know, trying to get the word out to people all over. If something were to happen, uh, could we use something like this? Or does your company make something that would allow us to continue to be able to get the word out there that people who had satellite phones could actually hear our program or hear updates from us uh, as we were receiving things that we could still communicate with the people outside? Well, we do have a service called Galileo. Um, and you can get that from sat123.com. And that's a new service that is put out over the satellite networks and can be received either on a satellite phone or a satellite device, a messenger device like a bivy stick. And you can read all about that at sat123.com or any of these questions. So if you have any questions your viewers do, they can call 941-955-1020. That's 941-955-1020. But overall, yes, we do have a solution for that. Galileo, I think, is around 10, 15 bucks a month. And that would enable you to you guys to put out uh, your news and keep going, even if all the other cell towers and internet is down. So we try to have as many solutions as we can. But it's a great question. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Chris, right, we appreciate you joining us today. I know you're busy, but again, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate all the information you've shared today. My pleasure, Joe. Well, thank you. All right. God, God bless you. Don't forget, go to sat123.com. Check out Satellite Phone Store today. Doug, we better get on a plan together. You're already out in the boonies. Yeah, I know. It I might am. be better than us talking to each other on our iPhones. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm, I'm sold because I know that this is something that we're going to need eventually. I mean, it, there's going to come a time where we're going to still need to be communicating with people, and the power grids may be down or some things may be happening. And it's, like he said, it's an insurance policy. And there's a lot of times, you know, that I'm out in the wilderness. <laughs> Dave and I and, and some other guys around here, we go hunting and we're out in the middle of nowhere. And my cell phone doesn't work out there. So to have something like that, I would be in constant communication with people where if something were to happen out in the wilderness, I'd be able to communicate. So, yeah, it sounds like a great deal. All right, sat123.com, or you can call 855-980-5830. Zero. All right, Doug. So, with what happened with the Israel-Iran, rather the Israel airstrike, mm -hmm. um, the escalation of that, and where we're going from here, we've been talking about it since end times, um, or our origin. We've been talking about this Middle East war that's right. coming, yeah. and we see these stories. Um, you know, our group was in Israel in October when the Hamas attacks began. Right. You and I are doing the show almost every day at that point going, hey, we don't know what's next. Right. But here's what we've been saying. Here's what we can see the Bible says. And uh, we know that something's coming at some point. And the further we go along every single day as these stories develop, it seems like we are closer to that war. Mm -hmm. And close, and, and then the China stuff, Doug, on top of that. It's like right. unbelievable how much. Ca and then we get accused lately, I I've seen, of... Uh, not mentioning the Russia-Ukraine war and right. how uh, there are people there that are being harmed. Well, this is happening on a global scale already. Right. Some we, people believe we're already in that third world war. That's what I was about to say. So yeah. uh, how do we process all this information? Well, you, you know, Vince, it's, it's just a matter of time before this happens because we know 
from the Bible that it's going to happen. And that's the thing. The prophecies will always come to pass. And so we've been telling folks for a long time that the two things that are lining up, that are going neck and neck down the finish line here, is the Six Trumpet War, which we also call World War III, and the peace treaty with Israel. Well, this is exactly what's going on right now, what they're talking about, this war out of Israel with Hamas. They're saying, look, at the end of this, there has to be a peace agreement. We have got to continue on with the Abraham Accord, and we, even if we have to force Israel into a two-state solution, it's got to be done because that's the only solution. I saw articles today as I'm getting this program ready where they're still saying, look, we've got to get Saudi Arabia to put more pressure in because we've got to get this moving. We've got to get this uh, peace agreement done, and we've got to have a two-state solution. It's the only way forward. And so we're watching these prophecies come to pass, Vince. And this one, if we are in that war already, we're not saying we are, but we're, I mean, it's looking like the world is at war right now. But just yesterday, I believe, um, Iran, you know, I talked about the airstrikes that they were doing in Jordan. Well, they also attacked a Christian community and, and killed a lot of Christians with these uh, drone attacks. So what Iran's trying to do right now is continue to shrink that ring of fire that they've talked about for so long. They're trying to, they, they even found out that they had shipped um, weapons and ammunition, even uh, tank um, guns. I can't remember what you call those things right now, but <laughs> the tank, the anti-tank weapons. They, they smuggled those into Judea, into Samaria, and they found them. The IDF found these weapons, and they, they're from Iran. So that's another reason why they were like, well, we've got to do something to let them know they've got to stop this. And so we're just watching it heat up. You know, every day it seems like it's heating up more and more. And now Iran says they're coming back and they're going to, you know, respond to what um, Israel did. And I, I don't know, Vince, we, we had some video. Do we still have that video? Well, they were playing it earlier. Okay, I didn't no. know if, if we got to see it or not. I was kind of looking down on my screen to get <laughs> that. But there was video of that embassy. There was video of the rubble after that. And you can see the embassy's right next to it. And that one spot was what was hit. And that's where these, uh, now I think the, the death toll is up to seven. And they're not sure who everyone was at this point. Uh, but they know that one of them was this uh, general who's been responsible for a lot of this. And some people said he was meeting with some Hamas uh, leaders, but that has not been confirmed yet. So we don't know that. Uh, but with our country saying, look, we, we don't know how we feel about this yet. Israel, you know, is like a loose cannon over there, basically, is what they're saying. And we're afraid they're getting ready to expand this war. Well, it looks like that could very well happen mm -hmm. with Russia, China, and the United States in the Red Sea. And the Houthis down there attacking. And then you got Hezbollah to the north of Israel attacking. And this strike was right in Damascus. And we know a lot of people talk about Damascus because a lot of people believe that's the Psalm uh, 83 war that, you know, everybody says, well, Damascus is going to be totally destroyed and all these things. And so we know that that's in scripture. We know that Damascus is going to be destroyed at some point, but it's not destroyed right now. But it was a very precise uh, hit that happened there. And anytime you start talking about that region, you talk about these things, we know that that war could heat up and this could happen. So, Doug, there's just Man, there's so many distractions happening. I mean, we can talk a little bit about the eclipse. We can talk about the White House's uh, declaration on uh, Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We can talk about what's going on in China and, of course, Ukraine, Russia, and even the Israel-Hamas war. There's so many distractions, so many things that are uh, vying for our attention. Uh, some of those reasons um, you're seeing... Uh, even with like the gold prices pushing to all-time highs right now, the cost of goods continues to rise despite interest rate control by the Fed. Uh, since January 21st, cost of living is up almost 18%. That's one of the reasons. The national debt continues to skyrocket, now above $34 trillion, causing many to worry when that house of cards is going to come crashing down. And, of course, we've got the presidential election this year, which we haven't even mentioned yet today. But that's going to have massive implications on the future of this country. The instability and uncertainty is why so many Americans are turning to Birch Gold Group. 
Have you diversified your savings yet? We encourage you to pray about securing a portion of them with gold from Birch Gold. Go to birchgold.com slash end time. Get your free info kit today. Make sure you know what you're doing with your family and do what God's leading to do. You'll learn with that info kit how to convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax sheltered IRA in gold. And it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. So with tens of thousands of happy customers, you can trust Birch Gold too. Visit birchgold.com slash end time to protect your savings from uncertainty today. Doug, how do you feel about the uncertainty? How do you feel about, it feels like there's a heavy burden um, just looking at all the things going on in society. Yeah, I mean, I, it does a lot of times, Vince, you know, but the, the thing about it, we were telling everybody before, we're, we're not trying to spread fear. We're not trying to scare people. We're just trying to make you aware of the things that are happening and the possibilities that could come out of this. And that's what we try to do all the time. Of course, we know that if we are living for God and if we're, our names are found in the Lamb's Book of Life, it doesn't matter what they can do to our body because they can't hurt our soul. They can't hurt what is truly who we are inside and where we're going to be with our Creator. Uh, you know, Paul said to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so it's, it's not like you can threaten somebody who has that knowledge, you know, with death. You're not going to threaten me with death because I'm thinking, wait, to, to die is gain is what I hear in the Bible and I'll be with the Lord forever. And so that's not something you can really threaten us with. And we're not trying to scare you, but we're just trying to help you to understand that these things are happening in our world and it looks like things are, are ramping up. And with this attack, it was a very um, blatant attack. I mean, it was close to an embassy, and that's kind of a big deal there. Now, that's what Iran says that they're going to do. They're going to go after the embassies of Israel all over now, all over the world, that they're going to have their proxies all over the place attacking Israeli embassies. The, the scary thing for me also, Vince, is that we are coming up on Passover this month, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of Jewish people making pilgrimages to Israel. There's going to be a lot of people going there uh, and for the Passover, and it worries me about that, too, because what if we saw another October 7th type attack, and these people are there, and we see mass casualties again. We see hostages being taken and people raped and killed. Well, Doug, we better talk about on the other side of the break some of the Red Heifer stuff, some of the Eclipse stuff, yeah. the White House Declaration, and more. Uh, we're also taking your calls, 877 end times the number to join us, 877-363-8463. We'll be right back after this break. A voice spoke to me and said, I've got something I want to show you. I was so sure God had talked to me, and I was stunned by what I saw. A direct fulfillment of this over 2,500-year-old prophecy. The United States will stand with Israel. Why haven't I ever seen this before? One-third of humanity will die. What do these beasts symbolize? The lion, the bear, the leopard. The combined beast from Revelation 13 represents the end time government of the Antichrist. Understanding the end time. Now streaming on End Time Plus and available to order at endtime.com slash UET. Go to endtime.com slash UET or call 800 End Time. What if you could understand Bible prophecy? Dave Robbins, the host of the End Time Show's TV and radio programs, is holding a free prophecy conference near you. Gain peace and understanding about what the Bible says concerning end time prophecy. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com slash events to see when Dave will be in a location near you. Welcome back to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. Open lines at 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. We'd love to hear your perspective on today's topic, so give us a call. I do want to tell you in a few weeks, actually, uh, Dave and Jana Robbins and Judy Baxter, as I understand it, are going to be in the Detroit, Michigan area for a conference there in uh, Plymouth specifically. That's a special conference for us for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, we helped, actually Irvin Baxter when he was still alive, he and Judy and Dave and Jana, they went 
up to Plymouth and had a Bible study and uh, there was no church at that time and that Bible study is actually what helped launch that church in Plymouth, Michigan and now um, Irvin's grandson, my cousin actually, uh, he and his wife pastor there in Plymouth now leading that church and so we're going to go there in a couple of weeks and we're going to have a great time at that conference so it's special because uh, End Time had a hand in helping launch that church and also because there's family there and Judy's going and so uh, and Doug, another thing it's right near Dearborn, Michigan. Dearborn is the number, it's the cap, the Muslim capital of the United States. Yeah. And of course, the second uh, most populated Muslim area is literally on the other side of the highway here uh, in Richardson. From, from end time in Richardson, yeah. Texas. Um, <laughs> but Dave's going to be teaching about the green horse, which is Mus uh, Islam. Yeah. Uh, and World War, Th World War III. So... Uh, there's no telling what he might get into, who might show up to hear what he has to say about the green horse and Islam. So be praying for Dave and Jana. And uh, of course, Judy will be going and that conference is going to be a great time. So go to endtime.com slash events to learn more about the specific details around that. Or you can always call us 800 end times a number uh, for that. Doug, um, I don't know where to start on these random topics that we need to address. Maybe the White House one. How about that? You saw the declaration of, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but nonetheless, as opposed to highlighting Easter, um, we did a declaration for, I think it's transgender... Revealing or something like some that, isn't it? Or visibility, visibility, Transgender is. Visibility yeah. Day. Thank you to um, Landon in the uh, production. Uh, we, need a, we need a camera <laughs> in there to highlight. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about that when you see, you know, I, I think I saw there's 175 days in the calendar where we s emphasize LGBTQ um, 2S plus, I think is what it is now, LGBTQI 2S plus, something like that. I have no idea. Uh, I think I saw 175 days. That might be wrong. Uh, whatever it is, there's dozens of days mm -hmm. where we do that and the White House. Now, I, I think we talked about it yesterday, but apparently every March 31st they acknowledge this but Easter landed on March 31st so people are extra well, concerned this year yeah the, the problem with it is that the White House refused to have any religious symbols at the White House for the Easter egg roll thing that they do every year so for Easter they said no Christian no religious you know things about Passover or anything like that or the religious <laughs> aspects of Easter, but hey, we're going to uh, celebrate drag queens and transgender people. So uh, it's very concerning to me, Vince. I know a lot of people say, Doug, we can read your face that you want to say more whenever you start in on something. And uh, there's a lot that I would like to say, but, you know, one of the things we talked about this morning in prayer, too, is that there is uh, a gentleman who, a pastor who was down uh, in the Rio Grande Valley this week, this past week. Uh, what they started out in Del Rio, I think, is where they started. They ended up in, um, where was it, um, McAllen, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they baptized over 3,000 people on this journey as he was, he was doing revival down there on, on our Texas border where we're having so many problems with this influx of illegal aliens coming into our country. And at the same time, while this was going on, 3,000 being added to the kingdom of God, there were churches in the United States that were having drag queens perform in their church on Easter Sunday morning. Mm. And so when you say, how do I feel about that? I'm very concerned and I'm very upset, but we shouldn't be surprised because Jesus told us himself in the final days, there would be false prophets. There would be people that come in his name that would say, I come in the name of Jesus Christ, that were going to be false prophets, folks, and that they were going to lead people astray. And that's what we're seeing. And now our, our government, our country, our president is getting behind this stuff. And instead of celebrating, and I know Easter, I know there's a lot of people that are like, well, there, you know, Easter is a pagan holiday and this, but we don't celebrate Easter. I'm not celebrating uh, the, the fertility goddess, okay? I'm celebrating a risen Savior, 
who died on a cross for my sins, was buried, and three days later he rose from the grave. And that's what I'm celebrating. I'm, I'm celebrating it at a time called Easter. And somebody, I saw this morning, somebody said that Easter is not mentioned in the Bible one time. But if you have a King James Bible, it is mentioned in the book of Acts. It says Easter. I think Paul was imprisoned and they were trying to get his trial done before Easter. And it calls it Easter. Now I know that, you know, that's in the King James Version. And, and I know who wrote the King James and I know all that. So, but I'm just saying somebody said it's not in there. I mean, it is if you have a King James. It is one time. But anyway, it's, that's beside the point. The thing is, is that our country is not uh, being led in a, in a good place right now. We are, we are no better than Sodom and Gomorrah at this point. Well, all of that is relevant, Doug, and I don't dismiss any of it. But even if you did, I'm going, okay, Biden is a good Catholic man, as, as is proclaimed. Don't Catholics celebrate Easter? Mm -hmm. And yet he did what he did. So notice, here's me being quiet. And yeah, and you're making really that face, and everyone knows you want to say more. So we won't say more. <laughs> Maybe in the yeah. second hour, that only be on End Time Plus. That doesn't exist yet, but we know y'all want it. Um, how about the eclipse, Doug? Yeah. People are saying something crazy's going to happen mm -hmm. on the eclipse. I, I saw where CERN is shooting up in, uh, into the sky that day. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know details about that, but I see that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard NASA shooting rockets. I, I don't know what. I'm wondering, uh, are they either. just getting pictures of what's happening? I don't know anything about the details of that. But there's a either. lot going on, of course. There are school districts all over the place. That are, the kids are out. Of Here school. in Dallas, yeah. In, in my hometown, too. And got a text from one of our friends today that... His sister works at a bank in uh, Ohio, and the bank that she works at is closing down on Monday for the full day for safety concerns. The National Guard's being called out in a lot of different places. Uh, I saw yesterday Niagara Falls is calling for a state of emergency. Uh, as we mentioned earlier with our conversation with Chris, uh, the, uh, a lot of the EMS and emergency responders have been told you know, it could be an influx of calls that day, and it may, communications may be down. So my question is, why are they saying this? Because we've never had any of this happen before. We've had eclipses before. I mean, we, I, I think I still have a picture somewhere of Pastor Baxter in this parking lot in 2017 with those glasses looking up at the eclipse. You remember that? Yeah, it, it looked like the rapture was about to happen. <laughs> yeah. And so... It's happened before and nothing has happened. Now, there are people What, what about What about Nineveh, ministries. Doug? Well, yeah, so I'll, I'll get there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me rant for a second. All right, go on. So there are pastors that have, you know, programs on network TV that are saying there's going to be earthquakes and things like that. And could there be earthquakes? I mean, there possibly could be. We have earthquakes all the time. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be because of this eclipse. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, there was, there was, the sun was blacked out, I think for like three hours, the scriptures tell us. And there was a great earthquake and the veil was ripped in the temple from the top to the bottom. So yeah, those things have happened in the past. We don't see anywhere in scripture where that's gonna happen on Monday, Vince. But as you bring up Nineveh, you're right. Uh, the, the main thing about Nineveh was that they needed to respond to what God was saying and they needed to repent and we're in a country that needs to repent right mm -hmm. now and and so I, I'm going to say this as many times as I can say this this week we need to repent and we need to pray on April the 8th uh, and, and we need I think that it would be good just to fast and pray that day use it as a way to cry out to God and say we, we see what you're doing in, in the sky Lord and with the sun and the moon we see these things and we are repenting of our sin we're asking you to heal our land and call on the name of Jesus now you're not saying that he's sending this solar eclipse as judgment so you need no. to repent no you're just saying there's stuff going on in the world yeah why not put the focus on Jesus absolutely instead of being afraid let's call on the Savior let's call on his name we don't have to be afraid he didn't give us a spirit of fear right yep so there you go all right that's my challenge let's make April 8th, a day of prayer and fasting and repentance. All right. And the rapture's not happening. It's not happening. Okay. No. Um, 
last thing in in those topics that we hit right before the break, <laughs> the red heifer. Yeah. Um, we did a show last week. Is the red heifer ceremony going to happen this weekend? Right. Of course, some people didn't like that we were suggesting that that might happen around Easter because Jews don't celebrate Easter. Right. That's not what we were saying. Mm -mm. Can you clarify that? Yeah, there was a special Sabbath that happened this weekend. And, and as a matter of fact, we even talked about it on Wednesday last week or Tuesday, I guess we talked about it. That Wednesday, was they were going to have a whole day where they were just going to dedicate it to the red heifer. And they were going to reflect on the scriptures about the red heifer. They were going to make a pilgrimage up to... Uh, the area in uh, Shiloh where they're housed, where they're on a ranch there. And then they were going to proceed to the Mount of Olives for the final ceremony that night. And it said where the ashes will be burned. Okay, So we, we were saying, okay, well, this would actually, this last Passover or this last uh, Sabbath that they had on Friday and Saturday, because it starts on Friday night and goes till Saturday night, that that is actually in the book of Deuteronomy when they uh, would do the ceremony with the ashes. And so we thought, well, could they possibly do it? We didn't say they were going to, but they said, hey, if, if they're trying to take attention away from Passover, where everybody's expecting them to do it, what if they did it then and then, you know, kind of surprise everybody and it's already done? But we know that's not the case now because um, Dave has heard from uh, his friend Byron Stinson, and another person that's in Israel right now took pictures of them over the weekend, all four of them. And Byron was, Stinson being heavily involved with the Red Heifers yes. and getting them from Texas to Israel. And he is very much in the know on all the details. Right. And he couldn't tell Dave a whole lot, but he told him that. Which is interesting. Yes. Talk about that another day. Yeah. He, he said, I can't say a whole lot about it because we, we need to be real delicate about how we're approaching this situation. But it has not happened yet. Uh, and so... it. There was a rabbi that came out. He uh, did a rebuttal to the CBS news story. He said the altar wasn't real, that anybody is saying that is a liar. So he, he debunked the CBS broadcast. We were told by Byron Stinson that all you need is sticks and stones, pretty much. That, you know, you, they take these stones up there, they build the fire, and then they can uh, do the ceremony anywhere up there on the Mount of Olives. And so. Uh, it doesn't have to be a special altar that's built. That that altar they showed on CBS was actually in another location. So anyway, that's what we know right now of the red heifer. This rabbi that did this uh, story and has a video, he was very angry and upset. And he was saying, Christians don't know what they're talking about. We don't even have all the pieces for the temple. So even if we had the ashes, we couldn't start building the temple. Well, we know that because they don't have access to that temple mount yet. That won't happen until that final seven years starts. So anyway, that kind of clears that up for now. Could it still happen? We'll have to wait and see. It's going to happen at some point. Yes, it is. We just don't know the day. That's right. Or the hour. <laughs> but for the rapture, different discussion. All right. All right, we're going to get into the calls on the other side of the break. You can join us too by calling 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. There's some open lines, so call right now and you will probably get on the show. We'll be right back after this break. They that understand what is taking place will instruct many. Except a man is born again, he can enter or see the kingdom of God. I don't care what label you've been given or what label you've given yourself, you are essential. You still matter. This is a journey, and when we get to the other side of that, that's where our prize is, that's where our reward is. End time is not going anywhere. Welcome back to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. Open lines at 877 time 877 Doug, are we ready to get to the phones? 
We better do it. All right, we better do it. Uh, we'll go now to Michigan. Samantha is watching there. Samantha, welcome to the End Time Show. Hi. Hi, Samantha. Hi. I have a question for both of you, and thank you so much for the End Time Show here in Michigan. My mom and my sister, Roxana, and my son, Nick, who is our assistant pastor, and myself, and many others in our church, we follow you guys, and you're such a blessing to us. And we miss uh your father, by the way, or your uh, Irvin. <laughs> well, thank you, Samantha. We appreciate yeah. it. And we miss him, too. You know, people tell us, we wish he was back and you guys weren't on the show. And we're like, us, too. <laughs> we all miss Irvin. So yeah, we, uh, we appreciate well, you your call. You guys are doing a great job. So I'll get right to my question. Have you ever heard of David Terrell, the uh, prophecy preacher back in the 60s? Oh, I've heard the name. I can't place it, though. Yeah, I, I haven't. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, he... Uh, would preach and tell people that God would give him visions that the wrath was coming on America and that all the major cities would be destroyed. And so it makes you wonder, but he said we needed to repent so that this didn't happen, but he would clearly see every major city being destroyed in America. And with the way that a lot of the churches are nowadays letting in sin, just like you said, Sodom and Gomorrah is, is like, has nothing on us. Right. Um, so I was just wondering what you thought about his um, prophecy. Well, I mean, I, I know, Samantha, that there is a possibility that we could be hit in several different places in this country. I also know that we have a lot of things that uh, we don't even know that we, we have militarily, that there are things set in place uh, that we don't even know about. I mean, I've seen some planes that I didn't even know existed and could do the things that they do. Uh, some of the planes the U.S. government has have been uh, mistaken as UFOs because of the way they move and the way they travel. And so we, we have some things that haven't even been unveiled. So uh, now, could, could we be hit so hard that something like that could happen? Absolutely, we could. But if God wanted to, to destroy us, he could just send fire and brimstone from heaven down on us, just like he did That's in right. Sodom and Gomorrah, and he could destroy us. But, you know... the. All he needed to find was ten righteous men, and yeah, and that's you know, the way and, I feel. I feel like there's millions of wonderful Christians yes. that are crying out to the Lord, and I like your idea about April eighth that we all need to fast and pray. Yes, ma'am. And God's still in control, no matter what. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's great to hear your voice too, because you sound so joyful and energetic oh, about it, and, and it's good thank to hear you. a believer have, not be afraid and have that much joy. That's right. I was filled with the Holy Ghost at five years old. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so God is good, and uh, all of our church in Three Oaks is Calvary Tabernacle is praying for all of you, and we appreciate you all. Thank, well, thank you, Samantha. You. God bless you. We appreciate your call. Uh, Doug, you know, the dream that she described, we don't see that in the Bible anywhere. Right. Um, it seems like that would be something if... Uh, a major country like the United States had every major city destroyed. Uh, seems like that might be noteworthy. Yeah. Um, you know, so we can't really say. Uh, one thing I would add is, uh, you know, it's really hard to interpret someone else's dreams. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe those cities weren't physically destroyed. Maybe they're destroyed due to, you know, from within, and and maybe they're still existing, but there's. Yeah. No spirit of God really in there. So we're seeing that in some places too. I have no idea about that uh, gentleman's dream, but yeah. I do know that there are people that are decaying all around the world spiritually, mm -hmm. and um, boy, we need a a revival like never before yes, in sir. so many lives, so many cities, and of course. We highlight being born again, making sure you've been transformed the way the disciples were. You can go to endtime.com slash reborn to learn more about that. All right, we're going to go to Tennessee now. John is watching there. John, welcome to the End Time Show. Good afternoon to the two of you. Good afternoon, Hello, John. John. Uh, let's see here. i got a couple of points. <laughs> One on the uh, satellite phones. I think they're a good idea. I think people should have them if they want to, you know, prepare for problems that come up. Just any natural or even man-made problem that might come up, other than possibly an EMP. I don't know if they 
handle an EMP or not. But nothing can handle that mostly. We'll ask Chris the next time we talk to him. Yeah, yeah. He he was an interesting go, person. I really want to talk to him again. Yeah. Second point. Uh, I put a lot of uh, research into this. Tens of minutes, at least. <laughs> tens of minutes. And as far as a name for Vince uh, offering from your guru status for Doug. <laughs> I've thought about it a lot, and I think other people should think and comment if they like the idea. I think it should be grasshopper. Grasshopper? grasshopper. So Doug's the guru, and I'm the so, grasshopper. Yeah. Am I going to sit here with a pebble in my hand and say, when you can yeah, snatch Yeah, you're going to have to get a pebble and a, a roll of rice paper. <laughs> uh, and uh, have the grasshopper make sure that, you know, he's getting his education done well. Okay. Well... <laughs> I we'll knew see. Doug would get that immediately. If you like John's idea about the grasshopper, they don't make an emoji for that, but they do have one that's a cricket. So put the cricket emoji in the comments if you like John's idea. Well, John, he's got the look for it. He's got grasshopper. The, the, yes, he's he got does. the bald he's head got, going for grasshopper. He, he probably doesn't it. have a clue what we're talking about right now, but I'll fill probably him in. Probably not. Later. It's probably escaped him. He's a younger, younger <laughs> yeah, individual. He's too no, young. He's past, so yeah. young. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Believe me, you are. Enjoy it while you. All right. Well, thanks, anyway, John, for calling today. To talk to you. Brought a smile to our face, sir. <laughs> bless you all, and you're in our prayers. Thank, Thank you, you, John. God bless you. Uh, Doug D. from Facebook, she wants us to talk about uh, that some are saying that the Jews must take the, uh, the moss down on the Temple Mount in order to build the temple. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about whether that's true or not according to Scripture? Does that moss... The Dome of the Rock. Does that right. Dome of the Rock need to be removed in order for the third temple to be built? Well, a according to Revelation chapter 11, 1 and 2, we will not see that happen because that scripture tells us that John was given uh, a reed like a measuring rod and told to measure the temple but to leave out the outer court. So the temple, the worshipers, the altar, everything there. So we know it's a functioning temple and this is going to be a temple of the end time. And he was told to measure it, but leave out the outer court for it was given to the Gentiles and that they would trodden it down for 42 months. So we know there's going to be a sharing arrangement there, Vince. And, uh, you know, we've both been to the Temple Mount. We've seen the area that's just north of the Dome of the Rock. There is plenty of room right there to have it there. And as a matter of fact, one day the, the guys, as they were mocking up a picture from a program we were doing, they mocked it up and put the temple next to the Dome of the Rock. And, uh, and it, that is about where it would sit. And so it, it can be done. It's, I'm being told it's Literally on the screen between behind us, right, us now. right now. It may be a little hard to see because it's in the blue there. But, uh, yeah, you see the Dome right of the there. Rock there, and then Vince is pointing to... I'm like a weatherman. I've yeah, got Yeah, there you man. go. You're pointing to the temple there. So they mocked that up so that we could have it. But that is the perfect location for it, plenty of room for it. And it's just north of the Dome of the Rock. And there's even a place there uh, that is called the uh, Dome of the Spirits. And they believe that that was the original uh, holiest of holies. So... Anyway, that's your, that's your answer there. According to Scripture, there will be a sharing arrangement of that temple mount, and it's going to be a house of prayer. This is what they say right now, that it's going to, the temple is going to be a, a, a house of prayer for all religions, for all peoples, and that's what they want. They want to be able to share it with everyone, Muslims, Buddhists, Christians, Jews, everybody. All right. There we go. All right, we're going to go to Texas now. Larry's watching there. Larry, welcome to the End Time Show. Yes, hi. Greetings, salutations. Um, I, I had read a couple of articles on the Internet that uh, Donald Trump, maybe about a year ago, received a Torah crown from a group of uh, the Sanhedrin priests and rabbis that came over from Israel, and also he received a menorah. And on the menorah, it talked about the Abraham Accords, and it said Donald Trump, Prince of Peace. And the only Prince of Peace I know is Jesus the Christ. So um, I don't know if you have heard about that. I'm sure you have, but you give me some feedback, because it really took me aback when I read those things. And, uh, and can you just give me your feedback on that, if you know about this? 
Sure, Larry. Uh, we actually saw it when it when it happened. It was broadcast, and I, I think we might even had it on a clip from the program that day. But all we saw was that he was receiving that gift from them. Uh, we didn't hear about the the inscription that was on there. That's a you're telling me something I had never heard before about that. Yes. Uh, you know, of course. Here's the thing: is that the Sanhedrin and the Jewish people. They don't recognize Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. They don't recognize him as, uh, you know, the Messiah. And so uh, for them to do something like that, it wouldn't surprise me because Trump did uh, do a lot of things for Israel just by moving the embassy to Jerusalem and then, of course, with the Abraham Accord. And so doing those things, they believed that, you know, he was going to achieve the peace. And then, of course, he didn't get back in office. And so that peace treaty kind of began to fall apart. And so they, it, I'm not saying that it's not on there. I'm saying that they, uh, they don't really understand who the Prince of Peace is at this point. They don't know Jesus is their Messiah. And they would really, you know, they would be upset with us for even saying that. Because, you know, any time that we mention Jesus, if you mention Jesus, you know, Jewish people get irate about it. They don't want to hear that name because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But one day, right. some of them definitely will when his feet touch the Mount of Olives. Larry, we talked about this specifically on July 31st. The title of that show was Antichrist Watch Donald Trump Receives Torah Crown. So if you go to watch.endtime.com and you search that title, Antichrist Watch Donald okay. Trump Receives Torah Crown, uh, we talked about those details for just about an hour. So that, uh, I don't recall the details around it now, but we did cover it then. Yeah. Larry, we appreciate your call. Thank go you, there, Larry. check that out. It's available for streaming for totally free. So check that out today. Uh, you'll get an extensive response from us there. All right, we're going to go to New York now. Joe, uh, it's the Joe Show. You've got about 60 seconds. Sorry to bring you on so late, but that's the best I can do. Uh, welcome to the show, Joe. I love you guys. Keep praying, everybody. We need all the prayers. There's so many different pieces of the puzzle coming together quicker and quicker. That's what we, that's what we see happening. But I ask everyone to continue my wife and I are not in very good shape, but we're trusting the Lord. We're, we're, we're fighting the fight of faith. And I love you guys. I am proud of you guys. I send my love to every believer. And anyone wants to send me an email, I greatly appreciate the email. Is EWX97MC at Hotmail.com. I answer every email, and your names go into my prayer journal. And that's what the Lord is doing with me over here to stay active. I can, I'm can, i very physically limited to what I can do right now. I'm, I barely can leave my bedroom. Uh, the pain in my feet and legs has become uh, uh, outrageous, but I trust the Lord. Everything has a reason, whether I understand it or not. That's small potatoes. Well, Joe, Jesus we are praying Lord, for you, God and we are up against the end of the show, so I'm sorry Love to cut you, you off. We're praying for you. We love you. Uh, everyone mentioned Joe and his wife in your prayers. Of course, Joe's been a longtime listener, uh, frequent caller over the years, and we appreciate Joe so much. Put the Joe Show, if you love Joe as much as uh, we do, put the Joe Show in the comments uh, and remember Joe and his wife in your prayers. Well, today it's been another show that's flown by. Can't believe it's already over, but it is. Uh, there's thousands of hours of content. Totally free, Doug. Watch.endtime.com. Uh, or you can get the stuff behind the subscriber wall if you use the code YouTube. You'll get it for less than $6 a month. Incredible deal that's only available for a limited time. So do that today. Of course, all this is made possible because of our wonderful partners to give every month at endtime.com give. We'll see you right back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Time.